So on October 3rd, um, Free Eye Atlas will pass within 29 million kilometers. And NASA detected a mysterious object speeding toward Earth. NASA flagged a fast mover tearing across the inner solar system, and then the sky turned green. Not the soft sea foam of familiar comets, but an electric halo bright enough to ignite message boards and force observatories into emergency mode. They call it 3I Atlas, only the third confirmed interstellar object ever seen. And in a few short weeks, it will sweep past Mars and cut in toward the Sun, while the biggest telescopes in space are forced to look away. The clock is running, and the strangest part isn't the speed, it's the color. A color that shouldn't exist at that intensity, with the chemistry we know, not this loud, not at this distance. If space has a highlighter, this is it. The night the sky went green started quietly. On September 7, 2025, as Earth slipped into a total lunar eclipse and the moon blushed red, backyard astronomers were surfing the sky for side quests. One posted a frame, a faint icy blue fuzzball. Hours later, another image surfaced from a different continent. Same object, but now wrapped in a vivid emerald shell. Then more images arrived time-stamped and cross-checked, from Austria to Namibia to North America. A tiny, you know, a few millimeters thick uh, surface layer could generate the kind of glow that we see. It wasn't a filter glitch, and it wasn't an eclipse trick. As the moon left Earth's shadow, the comet's color held. Amateur forums detonated with theories. Professionals lurked, took notes, and booked spectrographs. People refreshed feeds, ran calibrations twice, then a third time. The green refused to fade. Something had changed, fast. But the path this thing was taking, that would prove even stranger than the glow. Backtrack to July 1st, 2025. The Atlas survey in Chile catches an object sliding too fast and too straight through a star-crowded field. Early fits don't close. The math refuses to loop. Hyperbolic, not bound to our star. As the data stream tightens, the speed lands around 61 kilometers per second relative to the sun about 136,000 miles per hour. Way too hot for an Oort cloud native. We cannot launch a, a, a rocket that would uh, reach it or intercept it because it will be moving at 98 kilometers per second at the perihelion. A faint coma and beginning tail tip the scales. This isn't a bare rock. It's a comet and not one of ours. The Minor Planet Center posts the designation 3I-ATLAS. Slack channels light up. After Oumuamua's tumble and Borisov's icy blow-by, a third interstellar visitor is here, and it's brightening. The orbit's eccentricity sits above one, a clean signature of a passerby that won't be captured. But brightness doesn't explain color, and the first spectra would flip every assumption on its head. There's a standard script for green comets. Sunlight hits dicarbon molecules in the coma, the C2 swan bands flare, and the comet glows green especially near the nucleus. The current glow of dust around the object uh, can be um, supplied. This time, the lines everyone expected weren't there. Teams from Chile to Hawaii and spectrographs on the cutting edge report the same puzzle. No detectable C2 bands. Yet the green was obvious in images, both amateur and professional. Meanwhile, infrared data show carbon dioxide roaring ahead of water roughly eight parts CO2 for every part H2O, completely backwards from most solar system comets. Cyanogen appears. Carbonyl sulfide shows up in trace amounts. CO and water lurk at low levels. But none of the usual suspects add up to that neon green punch. It's like finding a campfire that's somehow burning on dry ice. Labs rule out atmospheric contamination, eclipse artifacts, and reduction errors. If the color is real, and it is, the source may be something we've never caught glowing in a comet before, or a process that only works on material forged in an ultra-cold nursery beyond another star's CO2 frost line. And the chemical curveballs weren't finished. Metal lines usually come in pairs. Iron and nickel rise and fall together, locked in the same dust grains and released by the same heat. Not this time. Across dozens of observations, the spectra lit up with nickel, more than 20 distinct lines, some blazing in the ultraviolet, while iron hid or barely whispered. That imbalance doesn't play by solar system rules. One idea lodged itself in the conversation. Volatile organometallic nickel complexes bound with carbon in a way that lets them sublimate at lower temperatures, leaving iron behind in tougher, 
heat-resistant minerals. It's controversial, but the data dragged theorists to the table. If 3i Atlas was assembled in deep cold, far from the warmth of its parent star, it could trap nickel in fragile compounds that space weather freeze easily, while iron stays locked down. The chemistry points to a birthplace not just distant, but ancient, possibly older than our sun by billions of years. Think grains forged in a freezer and sealed for eons, only to crack open in sunlight here. And just as the mystery deepened, the biggest eyes we have were told to look away. Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope are built to guard their vision with their lives. Point too close to the sun and you risk damage that never heals. With 3i Atlas heading toward a late October perihelion, both observatories hit their red lines. Solar elongation limits, keep out zones, hard stops, call it what you want, the answer was no. Debates broke out inside allocation committees. Bend the rules for a once in a generation target or protect hardware that thousands of scientists depend on. In the end, caution won. The flagship telescopes went dark on the comet during the critical window, but the universe has a way of offering a second vantage. Mars, trailing just inside the comet's path, had orbiters with clear lines of sight. Mission teams for MRO and MAVEN scrambled to retask instruments, squeeze in target of opportunity slots, and coordinate data downlinks. Timelines shifted, detectors were re-zeroed, and pointing plans flipped overnight. For a few days in early October, Mars would be humanity's interstellar outpost, catching light Earth wasn't allowed to see. While the schedules flipped and detectors recalibrated, an uncomfortable truth surfaced. The comet had already slipped past us once. Months before anyone knew what it was, 3i Atlas photobombed our cameras. In late 2023, NASA's TESS stared at a patch of sky grabbing hundreds of frames for exoplanet hunting. Buried in that stream was a faint, moving point, our interstellar visitor, missed by the automated pipeline tuned for planetary dips, not rogue comets. And linking the frames by hand would have seen a tiny drift. No one did. In mid-2024, the Vera Rubin Observatory, still in engineering mode, also caught it during test runs. The data sat unmarked, drowned in volume, only after the discovery did researchers pre-cover the comet in those archives, tracing its path back through time. The near-miss stung and inspired in equal measure. Pride in the surveys that make systematic discovery possible. Nostalgia for the days when a lucky glance could change everything. And a clear lesson, the era of cometary luck is over. The age of real-time algorithmic vigilance has begun. The physics, meanwhile, wasn't just quirky. It was a new baseline waiting to be written into the textbooks. Polarimetry, the way scattered light is polarized by dust, added another twist. Measurements pushed deeper into negative polarization than anything on record for a small body this close to the sun, edging closer to the behavior of trans-Neptunian objects than the comets we know. Translation, the dust in 3i Atlas is structured and sized in ways that echo the untouched outskirts of planetary systems not the reworked fluff of frequent sun grazers. Likely submicron grains, tightly packed, producing a polarization curve that screams outer disk. Hubble's last clear images before the safety cutoff, likely under a handful of kilometers across. Compact, dense, wrapped in a CO2 heavy coma that hid more than it revealed. Combine that with the nickel over iron surprise and the weak water signature, and you get a blueprint for planet building our system didn't emphasize. Colder chemistry, a carbon forward rule book, volatile metals, dust evolved in alien conditions. If that's the fingerprint of one interstellar grain, what else are we missing because we're too slow to get there? The community is already drawing the blueprint for a better chase. Rubin will scan the entire sky every few nights with depth and speed we've never had and its software is being hardened to flag hyperbolic trajectories and bizarre color signatures in near real time. Survey lines will ping when a fast green drifter darts in from the dark. But survey alerts are only half the game. Engineers and mission planners are sketching rapid response interceptors, small modular spacecraft that sit on the shelf until a target appears, then launch on short notice. Concepts include solar sail flyers that can pivot quickly, instrument packages that snap together for different science goals, and swarm probes that split and flank a target to map its chemistry in 3D. Think 
micro-mass spectrometers, dust analyzers, UV imagers, and wide-field cameras riding shotgun. The goal is simple and brutal. Stop losing these visitors to time. If a comet like 3i Atlas is a courier from another star, you don't just watch it from afar, you meet it halfway. So where does that leave us as the green intruder makes its sprint? On October 3rd, 2025, 3i Atlas brushes closest to Mars, and the orbiters there will try to catch what our flagships cannot. Weeks later, around October 29th, it will curl near the sun and fade back into the dark. We may never fully decode the source of that emerald glow. Maybe it's an unknown radical that only blooms under far UV bombardment. Maybe it's nickel complexes doing chemistry we've only seen in labs. Maybe it's a compound no one has modeled because no solar system comet ever forced us to. What's clear is this. Interstellar visitors carry the fingerprints of worlds we'll never see, formed under suns we'll never visit, carrying chemistry that doesn't owe our solar system anything. One pass, no replays, and that's the part that should stick. Three times now, the galaxy has mailed us a message. The first came as a tumbling shard that refused to behave. The second arrived as a classic comet with an alien accent. The third glows a color we can't explain with molecules we thought we understood. If we blink, they're gone. If we prepare, we can read them. As 3i Atlas slices past Mars and dips toward the sun, ask yourself, when the next messenger appears, will we be ready to meet it? Or will we find it later as a faint smudge in yesterday's data and wonder what secrets we let slip by?